As of this video, there are 23 MCU films, and with them come a lot of terrific characters. Unfortunately, there's some bad ones in the mix as well. Today, I'm gonna count down my worst five on another episode of Hot Takes. And there we are. Right out of the gates, my number five spot might be a little controversial to some, because I do like the Hulk, it's just his character's terrible in these films. There's such a lack of consistency with not only Bruce Banner over the course of his run, but also Hulk itself. We start out with Edward Norton playing the character. Something obviously goes wrong behind the scenes. I'm not really sure the whole story there. There's a lot of hearsay. No need to go into it. Then the green guy is taken over by Mark Ruffalo, who I believe did a pretty serviceable job the first time around when he's introduced in the Avengers. From there though, things get really herky-jerky. His power levels are wildly inconsistent, which is a theme that runs through most of the uh, MCU. You could say that it's not really a big deal, but it also kind of is a big deal. You know, when, when you have characters that at one point can like lift up the side of a building and throw it, and then in the next scene they can't do much more than limp across the screen, that, that doesn't really reek of good writing. And you can tell that there's different writers attached to these films and with it comes a lot of inconsistency. At some points, Mark plays him full-blown comedian and at others, he's that conflicted character most know him as. Like most things in Ragnarok, I thought he was fantastic here. Uh, although, yes, that is the full-on comedic angle of things. But then we see him come back again in Infinity War with a powerful performance where the Hulk is too scared to break out of his shell and really fight Thanos. And this thread is completely stripped away by the time we get to Endgame, which I don't understand how people can forgive it all. There is no worse type of writing than finishing a story arc off camera. While it is fun to watch Hulk smash, I really felt like this character never lived up to its expectations. If you were to look up the definition of generic, there would be a photo next to it that would have Jane Foster's face on it. Because Natalie Portman, who I love, who I adore, who I treasure, who I would leave my wife for if she allowed it, has virtually no character development or personality whatsoever. I just can't think of a single fun scene that she's in. I guess she punched Loki in Thor 2, and that was, you know, that was something. The fact, though, that she was so uninteresting and the fans clearly didn't care at all about her that they could just write her off after two love stories tells you everything they need to know. And to add some bizarre insult to injury, they are now bringing her back as a female Thor. And if you're scratching your head at that decision, so am I. How? Why? What? what? When? All I know is Disney, Kevin Feig, and whoever else is going to be writing this thing have their work cut out for them. Because not only do they have to make me convinced that she's worthy of taking on that mantle, they also have to give her a background and some excitement for me to latch on to. Don Cheadle's War Machine never worked for me. Terrence Howard was solid. I, I, I enjoyed his performance. I believed his performance. But when he, you know, fought off screen about paychecks, I think, he was trying to make as much as Robert Downey, or at least that was more hearsay. Who knows if it's true or not. Regardless, we got Don Cheadle, and that's... That, that just didn't fly. Don Cheadle's a fantastic actor and he seems like a great humanitarian all around, but I don't care about that. I just, I just didn't see him as this character at all. It's not even that he's necessarily bad in the role, it just seems like such a useless role to have. Tony's best friend who's also in an Iron Man suit and shows up on occasion, sometimes quips. I just, I don't understand War Machine. Loved him as Jarvis, hate him as Vision. I don't entirely know what the purpose of this character even was. He seemed like he was Superman. He could fly, he could shoot laser beams, he had super strength, all sorts of other cool stuff that we really never see outside of an occasional thing here and there on Age of Ultron and, uh, what, Civil War? He laser beams down a building and Wesley snipes Don Cheadle from like three miles away, who doesn't die. We have to deal with that more. He's just one of those characters that I think seemed like a good idea on paper. But once they got him out in the open, they were like, oh crap, we got to use this guy now? Like he's super powerful, but we don't want him to just constantly save the day. Plus in the facial expression department, he even gives Tobey Maguire a run for his money. 
Captain Marvel is just the worst. And no, this wasn't a video dedicated to just bashing on her the entire time. You can find a million of those online. People really hate Brie Larson. I don't have anything against her personally, although she's not a very good interviewee, I can say that much. But her character sucks. Captain Marvel comes out of nowhere. We all know the shtick. Okay, we all know the shtick. We're, we're like 29 or 30 movies deep by the time she's announced. The Avengers have already had multiple films and solo films, and Nick Fury clearly has established his A-team. Until he doesn't, and we retcon it in Captain Marvel. And it would be one thing if they did this well, but they didn't. Carol Danvers is just this blank, boring slate. This canvas that they could have could have really worked with and made interesting, but instead decided to just make her a stoic nothing. She makes the faces we all expect, you know, the proud, strong looks. But she has nothing to offer outside of that. We have no weaknesses for her. We have tons of power that is unexplainable. We've seen her fly directly through ships and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the strongest people in the galaxy, yet none of it has any impact because there's no emotion behind it, like there is with Thor or Iron Man or even Captain America. She already has a sequel in the works because the first one, of course, made a ridiculous amount of money. That's what happens when you strap it between two of the biggest events in movie history. These writers have their work cut out for them because they have to come up with something better than what they've provided so far. A cute alien cat and a hot blonde aren't enough to get me back into theaters for a second round. That's my list. I tried to keep it to more main characters, ones that are reoccurring that we're going to see more often in the future, and not so much the like three second cameo in the background. Now I'd love to see your list. Give me your top five, or I guess bottom five, MCU characters in the comments. Like and subscribe if you uh, happen to be a fan of what I'm doing. I'll see you next time on Hot Takes.